So today we're going to talk about end games. We're going to talk about three specific end games. Then I'm going to tell you some general advice, and then you'll beat everybody in the end game, right? Okay, and then when they ask you, how do you play the end game so well, don't tell them. Shh, secret. Okay, there's three endings you should know. This is the most important. You have a queen, and your opponent has nothing, so you're the favorite, right? You'll probably win, maybe. Okay, yeah, there you go. Why wouldn't you win? Stalemate. Who can raise their hand and correctly tell me what stalemate is? Stalemate is nothing can move. You have no legal moves. Your pawns can't move, your knights can't move, nothing can move. If nothing can move, and it's your turn, and you're not in check, that's, that's stalemate. When it's stalemate, who wins? Nobody. Nobody. So if this ended in a stalemate, which it probably would if you guys were playing, who would be happy, white or black? Black, black because black should probably lose this position, but he didn't, he got stalemated. And white should probably win, so if white stalemates, then white's not very happy either. And, and when it's stalemate and nobody wins, how many points do you get? Half. You get half a point. Okay, so a stalemate is better than getting checkmated, and checkmating somebody is better than stalemating them. So when you have a lot of pieces and your opponent has just a king, don't stalemate them, then you won't be very happy. Okay, now I've seen a lot of this end game, and a lot of people go check, and then check, and then check, and at some point, both kids start laughing. Okay, that's, is that how you win this end game? No. No, that's how you laugh a lot, but that's not how you win at chess. The, the way you win at chess in this ending is you have to use your king because you have two pieces, and your opponent has one piece, and two's better than one. And if you move your queen every single move, that's just one against one. And if you don't use your king, you can't win. It's impossible. You need your king to win. The queen by itself can't checkmate. Yes? Queen c5 Queen c5 is a good move. OK, but I'm more interested in move two. Move two is actually going to be the important move. OK, so here, w w their king is really far from our king, so I move my king closer. And I always move my king towards their king. I don't care what the position is. I always do that. I, I need my king near their king. And here, I can't move my king near their king because the computer won't let me. What? So in those instances, you should buy a new computer. You can go, you can go 5G, though, and use you, you could, but I'm like the same number of squares away. Like if I did this, there could be, another, there could be more laughing going on. <laughs> and I've seen this, too. I've seen this, and everybody starts laughing. And I'm like, well... Checkmating your opponents laugh after that. Okay, now sometimes my computer's broken, and you know how I fix it? A whole new computer fixes it right up. Okay, so here, okay, so here I can't, so I'm gonna play queen here. Well, I could play here or here, it doesn't matter. Okay, now, in a position where a king is on a back row, and there's four back rows, and if you're in France, the second highest rated player in France is back row, right? It's true, yeah, that's his name, okay? He's not the best because he's back row, so. Okay, if your king is on the back row and you have the queen, you want your queen on the next row because that way the king can't leave, right? And some people said chess players were squares, right? Nothing? And then yeah. the king's on the third yeah. row. Well, that actually, that's correct. Okay, but I don't have a, I can actually do yellow, but I don't know how. Should I call cold play? Nah, that wasn't yellow. Let's see this. Or I give up. Okay, I know when I'm beat. Okay, so you want the king on the third row, and now we can do checkmate. If it's white's move, everything's checkmate. It would be hard not to checkmate. You could do it, but it's tough. This is checkmate, this is check, this is checkmate. And this is checkmate. That's a lot of checkmates. Checkmate. But it's black's turn. Black moves his king. Now there's only one checkmate. Okay. And when the kings are lined up in a straight line, that's called opposition. That's good because you can checkmate somebody. When they're not lined up, like here, and they're not lined up, now you have to put the queen in front of the king. And actually, I've seen a lot of kids put their king in front of the king. But I need to buy a new computer to do that, because this computer won't let me. 
because that's not allowed. I need a computer that doesn't know how to play chess, then I could do it. Okay, I've actually seen kids go here and say checkmate, but that's not checkmate. Okay, so you're, you're never allowed to have your kings touching. Now this is checkmate because black has nowhere safe to go. Okay, and it's not stalemate because the guy's in check. Now if we, if, we, if we make a bad move, you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, a bad move. And now this is checkmate, so white wins. And what's this move called? Stalemate. So should white do that? No, because then white doesn't win, so that's not good. Okay, so you, you'd rather win than not win. Yeah, checkmate. Now, now a very common, a very common uh, thing that happens is this. This is, happens all the time. Okay, this position is very common in chess, and then white makes a mistake, and it's stalemate, and then both sides cry. Okay, I, I assume. So remember what I told you? When the, when, wait, that's the wrong button. What's the right button? Is it this one? Hmm. Yeah, so when the king is on the back row, you want your queen on the next row. So you can make a mistake here and play king here, which looks good, but it's stalemate. So then you don't win. So, but queen here does, does what I said, so that's probably better. Okay, and then you don't stalemate in those situations. Now you can chase the king, which takes a long time. Okay, you can chase the king all the way to the corner. Or if you want to do it more quickly because you got a bus to catch, okay, in, in, instead of chasing the king, you can make the king come to you. So the king's running away, you can make him run towards your king. That's better, right? Yeah. Okay, so he wants to go here, he wants to go here. Or in some instances here. So you play queen here and he can't do that. Yeah, yeah then he has to go this way. And, that, and then you can go checkmate. Or if you don't like that checkmate, you can do this one. It, uh, maybe you like that one. Okay. And when you checkmate a king with a king and queen or king and rook, which is next, the king has to be on a back row. If the, black, if the opposing king isn't there, there's no, no checkmate exists. Yeah. Once the king is there, you keep him there. So a very simple example, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat a little bit and just do this. Okay, that was good cheating. Okay, if you're white in this position and it's your turn to move, you already have the king on the back row. Should we let black escape the back row? No. No, so we should either go queen here, queen here, or queen here. They're all good. I would go here myself. But, okay, and then, then he would go back and forth. Not very much to do. Now, if I was black, I would go off the board, but I'm a grandmaster, so you guys can't do that. Okay, even the computer can't do it. Okay, and then, and then everything's checkmate. Check, checkmate. Checkmate everywhere. Yeah, everything's checkmate. Okay, now this checkmate is always checkmate with a queen, but it's never checkmate with a rook. If that was a rook, the king could move sideways. So if this was a rook, the only checkmate is this one, because rooks can't move diagonal. Oh. So oh, yeah. Yeah. that would be, and, and if a rook is on the side and the kings are in opposition, that's, that's checkmate. Okay, a queen's actually pretty easy to checkmate with. The problem is it's also easy to stalemate with. Yeah. If you have a king and a rook against a king, it's actually hard to stalemate. You don't have to worry as much. Here you have to worry because you might stalemate your opponent and then you don't win. Yes? Did you raise your hand? I missed it. Yeah? You. It, it sounds almost impossible to stalemate with the hand. Or... It is almost. I can do it, but I, I don't like to. Okay, so let's see. I do this. No. And then we'll make this a rook. Okay. And as Richard Nixon once said, I am not a rook. So he's not a rook. Okay, now in this position, if that was a queen, you would go queen here, checkmate, and that's it. But it's a rook, so you can't do that, because then it wouldn't be checkmate. So a rook is tough. It's not easy to mate with a rook. So if black plays king here and lines up the kings, then this is checkmate. But if you play here right away, even though I can't, I guess it's black's turn. Okay, so then it's checkmate. Hooray. But then, what is, 
Well, you could try to go off the board, but you have to be a grandmaster to do it. Oh, see, I did it. <laughs> okay, but in real life, you can't do it. And you can't move your king anywhere, it won't let me. Darn. I'm trying, and it won't let me. Stalemate? No, because it's not stalemate, because you're in check. Yeah. If you're in check, I'm back. If you're in check, you're never in stalemate. Oh. That's, I, somebody wrote that down once. So stalemate is the same as checkmate, and there's one difference. Checkmate, you're in check. Stalemate, you're never in check. So checkmate, you're in check, and you have no legal move. Stalemate, you have no legal move, but you're not in check. Okay? And if you've played checkers before, then the rules are different. If you get stalemated, you lose in checkers. If you get stalemated in chess, it's a draw. Okay? Which actually, actually makes sense, though. Yes? That would be another way to win. I agree with that. Okay, so when you have a king and a rook, your opponent doesn't want to play king here because your opponent doesn't want to get mated, I assume. So your opponent runs away from your king, and then you chase it. By the way, the stalemate that hardly ever happens is this one. That's stalemate. Don't do that. But okay, that's hard to do, but that's it. That's like the only stalemate with a rook. It's hard to stalemate with a rook, but there it is. Okay, so you're going to keep, and now the king can't keep going because there's no more chessboard. So the, the king has to go here. We got our opposition, and then checkmate. If you had a queen, this would be checkmate. Is that checkmate with a rook? No, because no, the king can go sideways. And again, well, the, the king moves sideways, yeah. Okay, and also... A lot of kids, for some reason, they move their king next to the king and say checkmate. Now, if you watch TV, and that's all you do, then, oh, well, you have computers now, I forgot. But when you watch TV, there's a commercial for something. What's the commercial for? I didn't get that part. I just saw that I don't know what the commercial's about. But there's a commercial that's on every five seconds on every channel where a guy's playing chess. Oh, yeah. I think it's for, like, car insurance or something. But anyway... And then, and then he's like really thinking, and then, he, and then he takes the, what's it for? A focus commercial, like focus and like some kind of energy drink. It's an energy drink? Yeah, I don't know what the commercial's for. All I know is zoom, zoom, zoom. I don't know anything else. Anyway, so, so in, the, in the commercial, the guy takes his opponent's king because he's trying really hard. Okay, very suspicious because we, we don't do that. Okay, but in the commercial they do. Okay, so let's go back. Even though we can't go back, we're going to go back anyway by using trickery, and we're going back. Okay, oh, here's a good position to start. This is actually pretty hard. So your white, is it white's turn? Yeah. You're, if this was a queen, it's pretty easy. With a rook, it's pretty hard. Okay, so what you want to do is cut off the board so the board doesn't exist. Yay! Okay, like take scissors and cut the board. <laughs> then the guy can't move his king there because there's no chess board. And you can actually do that with a rook. You can cut the board off so the board doesn't exist. So yeah, so let's play this move. That means the rest of the game, the black king can't go here, can it? If it can't go there, then it can't go here, which means it can't go here. That part of the board doesn't exist. And we can actually keep doing that. Yeah, and, he, yeah. and at some point, he's going to go to a back row, and then we're going to checkmate him. Okay. Yeah, and now, like, where do I go? I can either go to the second rank here or the second rank here. That's unfortunate. Let's go to the second rank here. Yeah. So turn your head sideways. That's the second rank. <laughs> Otherwise, it's the fourth rank if you're looking straight. Now we just make a move like this, and black has to cry. When you have a king and a rook, you make a lot of waiting moves that don't do anything because then black has to move into a bad position. Black either moves to the back rank, which he doesn't want to do, or he lines up the kings, which he doesn't want to do, and then you check him to the back rank. Hooray. Yay. And we're almost, now a lot of people would go here, and now white has checkmate in two moves, and there's six answers. Is that enough answers? It's basically all six of these squares. Okay, this one's the closest, and then checkmate. If you don't like that checkmate, you can move your rook really far away, and if the king goes here, you go checkmate. And usually what happens is the king runs away, and you chase him, and the board runs out of room. 
And then he has to line the king up and you checkmate. Yay. Wait, is king here checkmate? No. no. How about rook here? No. No, none of that's checkmate. Okay, and you'll notice I hardly ever put black in check. When you don't know how to mate with a rook, you don't know what you're doing, then you go check, 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 check. That means you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> what you're trying to do is force the black king the, to one of the back rows here. Then you can put him in checkmate. Just like, with, just like, wow, that's a funny diagonal there. Just like with a queen. If every move you make is check, you're not doing it right. Okay, like in this position, if it was white's move, this check would be terrible. Yeah. Because black, you want black to go back here. Okay, so black wants to go up here. So forcing the king up here, that doesn't help you. So I move my king up, or I would move my rook here. To, yeah, e either way is good. They're all good. But the worst is like just checking randomly. Like, oh, I'll just check every move. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you want to move your king. You're the other guy's king. So you have two against one. Now, it's very rare that you have king and rook versus king. That would be a really close game. One side has a rook. One side has nothing. Most games are some mismatches where you're beating up on somebody. So you have a queen or two queens, or they have a queen or two queens, and they're beating up on you. That would be a really close game. Okay? And the tough move to play in a position like this is, is to not move at all. If you move king here, well, I guess I can't. But I can trick the computer, so I can still do it. Uh, let's see, did I do it? Yeah, I did it. OK, if you play king here, and they play king here, and you play king here, OK, and then you both start laughing, that's, that's not how you checkmate. Okay? When you want the kings to be in a straight line, like this, or like this, in a straight line. If you're the one trying to win, and you move the king in a straight line, your opponent will move away, because they have to. So don't do that. <laughs> you want the other person to move in a straight line, then you'll checkmate. How do you do that? Not by doing this and moving your king back. And not, you just make a rook move like here, and you go, aha, now it's your move, but don't say aha. OK, now if they go here, you checkmate. And if they go here, you chase them, and, and, then, you, and then you checkmate. <laughs> now I'll show you one more thing. And then, OK, you're white in this position, right? Yeah. Well, again, if you oppose kings, they're going to move their king away. Yeah. You want the other guy to oppose kings. But if the guy moves his king away from your king, he's going to attack your rook. Right. So I move my rook over here. Now he's not going to attack my rook. He can try to attack my rook, but I'll checkmate him first. So if you want to attack my rook, you want to go here, but that's illegal. So you go here first, checkmate. OK, so you run away, and I chase you. And the chase always ends in the corner. If you don't want to go in the corner, you can get checkmated quicker. OK, but you run in the corner. And now, and now you're forced to go here and then checkmate. I hate when that happens, unless I'm white, then I like it. And I heard in the last class with the teeny tiny kids, they're like this big. They were in some movie I saw. Honey, I, I shrunk my chess opponent. Okay, the, they, they beat the guy who was teaching, so they kicked that guy out, put me in. Is that what happened? No. Something like that happened. That was like half right. Okay, now the most interesting end games aren't these, because I win these too easily. The most interesting are king and pawn end games. King Clear. Pawn? Yeah. yeah, like you have a king and a pawn, and your opponent has a king. I sort of love this. Okay, so when you have a pawn in the end game, you would like to go all the way to the end and make what? A queen. Queen, okay, or in check or as a king. Now, in the end game, there's three things that are better than the opening. In the opening, you want your king to be safe. So you castle, you never move your king up, and you surround your king with pieces. In the opening, you never put your pawn on the back row because your pawn doesn't let you. In the opening, your rooks are in the corner and they never do anything. You've made like 10 moves and your rooks are still in the corner, right? Yeah. And you're like, ah, those rooks. Wow, well, that's, that's the horse of a different color. Okay. Now, in the end game, it's the opposite. Your rooks are crushing your opponent. Your king walks up the board, and your pawns become queens. 
Although your pawns only become queens when you get the grandmaster title. Then your pawns all become queens. <laughs> okay? So in this position, I want my pawn to become a queen, and then I'll mate with a queen, because I just learned how to do that. Yeah. I just learned a few minutes ago. Okay? And if you have the black pieces, you don't want the guy to make a queen, so you stop him. Yeah. So the question is, who's going to be successful? That depends on how well you play. Now, if the king is in front of the pawn, which it is here, then it should be a draw. Okay, and it's going to be a draw because of stalemate. Black just keeps his king in front. White can't move his king up. He can try to. And then black always keeps his king in front of the pawn and in front of the king. Black only moves sideways and forwards. Here, black can't move sideways or forwards. It's illegal. So he has to move back, and he has three choices. This is the key position in all of chess. One move draws and two moves lose. Well, um, he, he probably wants to move um, in the white square because if he does move in the two dark squares, he, um, once a pot moves forward, it has a better chance of winning and well, probably will get him. Strangely, that was correct. Are you surprised? I am. Yeah, Isabel's like, what? Okay, so you want to move to the white square, and the reason is when black moves his king up, you want to get the opposition and oppose his king. And this way you're ready for everything. Let's go that way. We oppose kings. The king can't move up. It won't let me. Man, if my king could move up, I would win. So the pawn has to check. The king has to go here to save the pawn, and that's called? So who wins? Nobody. Or white could try the other way, which is the exact same thing. And then, and then it's the different, same stalemate. Stalemate. Now let's say black makes a mistake and goes diagonal to here. Okay, now black's actually losing. White goes here. Black has to go here. And then white, black has to give way. And white makes a queen. Yay. And then white should win because I taught you that earlier. So in this position, you want to move your king back and forth. That's easy to remember. You always go back and you always go up. So if your opponent lets you go up, you go up. And then you go back. And then you go up. That's hard to remember, isn't it? Okay. Now what a lot of kids do here is they see the king over here. And they're like, oh, opposition. Now that loses. You have to go back and forth. So you go here. And then if he goes here, you get opposition. And in fact, this is a draw when the king is in front of the pawn. So this king is in front of this pawn, it's a draw. If we switch the kings, then sometimes white wins. And then you'll be winning. There's a rule. If you have king and pawn versus king, both sides want their king in front of the pawn. You always want to move your king up, not your pawn. Move your pawn up, the guy will take it. Yeah. If you move your king up, then your king can escort the pawn home. Okay, so for example, if the president's driving in a car and they want the car to be safe, do the Secret Service, are they a mile behind the car? Or are they in front of the car? The answer, the answer is both. But, but they're, not, they're not behind the car and then the front of the car is not protected. They don't do that. Okay, they got it everywhere protected. So if you want to make a queen with this pawn, you gotta, the white king got to get over there and help. Otherwise, it's going to be a stalemate. So what we can do is we can do the switcheroo. You guys ever done the switcheroo? No. Okay, we, we, we put the white king here. Lots of white kings. Okay. Now, if, if a grandmaster walked in and I said to him, is this a win or a draw? What would he say? A draw. So far, nobody has the right answer. A lose. Nobody, nobody has the right answer. Yeah, what's the right answer? Both. What? Both. Well, both is the right answer, but you don't know why. He would say, I have a question. Whose turn is it? And then when I told him whose turn it was, then he'd give the right answer. Okay, so if it's white's turn to move, it's a draw. If it's black's turn to move, black loses. Because this is the opposition. Both sides have a perfect position. So if white moves, black just follows white, and white can't do anything. 
And then eventually, White's going to give up trying to move his king forward. And he's going to move his pawn forward. And we already saw this. Remember the stalemate we just looked at? Stalemate. Okay. On the other hand, if it's Black's turn to move, which I can do by tricking the computer, uh, I can push Black to move. So that was easy. Yeah, now Black's losing because wherever Black goes, White's going to move his king up. There's no way Black can move the king and stop all those moves, unless he's where he's at right now. He'd have to pick his king up and put it back in the same place. <laughs> I would do that if I was playing, but then the director would yell at me. OK, so let's say we go to the side. White goes up. And then we go here. And now the king protects all these important squares. So the pawn just queens. The next four moves are all pawn moves, all of them. And then white makes a queen, and white wins. Because white's king is helping out his pawn. White wants to move his king up. So both sides want their king in front of the pawn. And if it's black's turn to move here, black loses, because white gets to move his king way up and help his pawn out. And if it's white's turn to move, it's a draw, because then white can't move his king up. It's illegal. Ah. I guess I flipped board by accident. That was funny. OK. Now I know how to flip board without even trying. Before I try and I can't do it. So trying is the first step to failure. Can't fail unless you try. OK. So yeah, when, so let me ask you this question. Where should white move his king here? There's a lot of possibilities, right? Where should white move his king? Uh, yes. D6, then white's winning. Hooray. Also, king d5, white's winning, but we won't tell him that. OK, and then, yeah, there's, 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 the, the, the king is escorting the pawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hate when that happens. Unless I'm white, then I like it. OK, <laughs> and then when you make a queen, you win. Now, what are, the dif shh, what are the differences between the opening and the end game? In the opening, you guys get lessons every day. They're like, Get your pieces off the back row. Castle. Don't make 27 pawn moves in a row. Play in the center. And then you guys don't do that, but people tell you to do it. Okay. In the end game, you can't be like getting your pieces off the back row. There's no pieces. And they're not on the back row anyway. Right? So the end game is different. In the end game, you want your king to be active. You want your king to go take stuff. You want to promote your pawns to queens. In the end game, Sometimes you have a lot of pawns that can become queens. In the opening, your pawns can't become queens because there's 8,000 pieces blocking them. Your opponent doesn't let you do that. And your rooks want to get really active in the end game because they start in the corner and they can't move. In the end game, they want to go to the seventh rank. And I'm going to tell you why the seventh rank is a secret. It's a secret everybody knows. Yeah. Okay, so let's get a random end game that I made up. Okay, here's a random rook and pawn endgame. Both sides have the same pawns. Okay, so it should be a draw because both sides have the same pawns. Now, if it's white's turn to move, white has two advantages. White's not going to get mated on the back row because white has a square for his king. And black will get mated on the back row. If black's rook leaves, it'll be checkmate. The other advantage is it's white's turn. So white goes to the seventh rank. That's where all the black pawns are. And now black's king can't move up. Black, OK, so black doesn't want to lose any pawns. And black goes here. Yeah. And now white can move his king up the board. And black can't do anything. If black moves his rook, he'll lose his pawn. If black moves his king this way, then he'll lose this pawn. So black should probably play like g6. Well, it's not his turn. If black plays g6 and then tries to move his king up, he still can't go here because he'll lose his pawn. So the white rook is much better than the black rook. It's on the seventh rank. And you want your rooks on the seventh rank in the end game, then your opponent can't do anything. Now what, what's that? Now what a lot of kids do, unfortunately, and Ben Simon, for example, is they like to put their opponent in check. Nothing is more fun than putting your opponent in check, right? So in this position, Maybe. they play rook here, check. Yay. Then their opponent goes here, and they're like, ah. 
Okay. Well, black wants to move his king up, and black doesn't want all his pawns attacked, so white should put the rook on the seventh rank. Actually, this check is a good start, then the seventh rank. Seventh rank is great. That's where all your opponent's pawns start out, right? Now, let's imagine a situation where your opponent moved all their pawns. Who knows? I don't know how they did it, but they did it. They moved all their pawns, and they have this position. Your rook is still good on the seventh rank. It doesn't attack any pawns, but it keeps the black king from moving up. It's sort of like king and rook versus king. The king can't move up. So white's king can move up, and black's king is stuck. So the seventh rank, even if there's no pawns, is still good because you're stopping the opponent's king from moving. And the, the thing that I see a lot, OK, it's black's move, fine. OK, this is the worst. If you had white in this position, and you go check and check, then you're just helping black move his king up the board, and you could have just stopped him completely. Now black has the advantage, because black's rook is good and his king is better. So you don't want to check your opponent's king up the board in the end game. You want to check your opponent's king up the board in the opening. And if your king's walking up the board in the opening, you're going to get checkmated, because your opponent has a lot of pieces. Here, black's not going to get checkmated. If somebody was going to win this end game, why would they win? What would the winning idea be? Are you going to checkmate with a rook against another rook? No. That seems difficult. Yes? You would um, get a pass pawn and get to the end and get a queen? You would get a pawn all the way to the end and get a queen. If nobody ever gets a queen, it's probably going to be a draw. If somebody gets a queen, they'll probably win. Yeah. So you want pawns to become queens. Here, no pawns are becoming queens. So nobody's winning yet. So you want, in the end game, when there's very few pieces left, you want pawns to become queens because a rook's not going to beat a rook unless your opponent gives the rook away for nothing. Then a rook will beat nothing. So, but if, you have a, if your pawn becomes a queen, then you'll win. And sometimes you'll even sacrifice material to do that. You'll give a knight away because you want to make a queen. Queen's better than a knight. So you're trying to promote your pawn, but there's something in the way. And you're like, ah, I can't promote my pawn. You sacrifice a knight. You sacrifice a bishop, maybe. Then your pawn becomes a queen. Then you're like, oh, OK, cool. Now, as all of you know, and when I say all of you know, probably none of you do, you can promote a pawn to different things. Yeah. Usually it's a queen, but occasionally something else. Uh, king here. Is this right? Yeah, that's right. Is it white's? Yeah. OK, now in this position, the normal move is you take the rook and make a queen. Black takes, and then it should be a draw, because it's queen and two pawns against queen and two pawns. And if you take this pawn, then you get checkmated. So don't take that pawn. OK, so that's probably a draw. But actually, white can win with the craziest thing you've ever seen in your life. Then you win. Okay, and this has to do with under promotion. Under promotion? Yeah, like when I go to a job after I'm there for about two, three weeks, I'm under promoted. Yeah. Yay. Yes. <laughs> it is queen takes a7. You sacrifice your queen. Black only has one legal move, so he should play it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, and then the king's not protecting the rook anymore. So if you make a queen, you still get checkmated. So don't do that. But you can promote to something else. Look, look how it gives me a choice. The knight, the knight, and then white's doing quite well because he's forking and checking. You have to get out of check. I can't make because it won't let me. I can keep trying, though. OK, and then, I, and then white has a knight and two pawns, and black has one pawn. So white sacrifices queen, under promoted to a fork, forking the king and queen. Happens every day. No, that only happens in puzzles. In real games, you never get to do that. Ah, they don't let me. I've underpromoted in real games, but it's really rare. I've played several thousand games. I've underpromoted like six times. And I've promoted to a queen about 20,000 times, because queens are good, right? Mm -hmm.